it's Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on Tech. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new writer to talk about their work and their writing. This morning, we are proud to welcome Barbara DeMarco Barrett. Um, Barbara's short story, Crazy for You, was first published in the Akashic, did I get that right, Barbara? Uh, Akashic? Akashic, yeah. Okay, there you go. Books Anthology, Orange County Noir, and was chosen for USA Noir, best of the Akashic Noir series. Palm Springs Noir, which we see prominently featured in the background, uh, uh, which she edited and contributed a story, will be released July 6th, 2021. Her work has also been published in Dark City Magazine, Crossing Borders, Shotgun Honey, The Literary Hatchet, oh, that sounds interesting, <laughs> Rock in a Hard Place, Paradigm Shifts, Broad River Review, Serial Magazine, and the o o Oyez Review. Her first book, Pen on Fire, A Busy Woman's Guide to Igniting the Writer Within, made the Los Angeles Times bestseller list and was honored with an American Society of Journalists and Authors Outstanding Book Award. Welcome, Barbara. Hi, Maddie. You have, um, you know, we see each other a lot, so this is fun. Uh, but uh, you have such a broad writing experience, and you you are um, dialed into writing on so many levels. Let's let's start uh, with something small that we and manageable, like your current project, although All it's right. probably big and giant. Uh, so let let's talk about Palm Springs Noir and and what it's like to edit an anthology and also be a contributor. Yeah. It, you know, it's been a long time coming. It actually, um, I think I got the go ahead a little less than two years ago, a little more than two years ago, because I was out in the desert in June of 2019 working on my story. So I think I must have just gotten the go ahead. And then it's been pushed, pushed because of the pandemic. But um, Palm Springs Noir, um, full of short stories that take place in and around the Coachella Valley. Um, 14 writers and um, long time coming. And it, it was the kind of project, you know, you have these projects that um, you can't let go of, you know, you love, you can't let go of them. And I had proposed this project to Akashic several times before they said yes. Um, the first time they said, oh, we're not ready yet. We're not doing domestic suspense or noir. Second time, no, we're not ready yet. The third time they're like, yeah, I think we're ready. And so, you know, it's it just, you have a passion project you have to do. This was it, I just had to do it. It certainly wasn't for the money. It was, uh, you know, I love the Akashic series. I don't know how many people out there are familiar with uh, the series, but all over the world, there are, are anthologies that Akashic publishes that are rooted in place. And so like with Orange County Noir that came out 2010, um, all the stories take place in Orange County, different writers for different cities, um, neighborhoods, and um, really, uh, you know, also gives you a feeling of the place. It's a setting is big in noir. And so um, that series, you know, whatever city or country you're interested in, you're gonna find an Akashic um, anthology that fits. Well, let's talk about um, Palm Springs because the desert in itself is such a great place for a murder uh, or, <laughs> or something um, terribly heinous. Uh, and I mean, it's hot, it's unforgiving um, on, one, on one hand, but on the other hand, there's um, fun and lights and casinos. And uh, so how did, what kind of instruction or, um, inspiration did you give the authors that wrote short stories that contributed? What was the, was Just there any place there. limitation or? No, no, no limitations. I mean, there was a word count of 6,000 words max. Um, and that was about it. It just had to take place in whatever city or, or neighborhood that they were assigned. And that was pretty much it. That was it. And it is such a great place for noir because by all appearances, it, it looks like a beautiful, wonderful resort city. And um, I've been leading uh, writers retreats there for seven years or so, not last year and not this year. But again, again, I hope. And 
before I did the first one, I went to the Palm Springs crime log to see what kind of crime was happening in the neighborhood where I rented a house for a month because I wanted to make sure the people coming to the retreat would be safe. And there's so much crime in Palm Springs. I mean, there's opportunists that are preying on um, tourists, right? And there's just, and then tourists that are really letting their guards down. And so there was a lot going on with, you know, how cheery and wonderful it, it looks and is. I mean, I love being out there. So, you I was know. just going to say, I think the um, Chamber of Commerce for uh, Palm Springs will be calling you after we finish. I know, I'm worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you know what's great is that this anthology is full of short stories um, that are the perfect size for people to read uh, whether they're at the beach or on a train or, you know, in between things or to sit down and spend an afternoon. Um, and you, you were able to round up such wonderful writers. I mean, uh, TJ, uh, T. Jefferson Parker, um, uh, Eric Beatner, Todd Goldberg, uh, the inimitable Todd Goldberg. Uh, how, how did that happen? How did you get everybody together or? Yeah. Um... You know, most of the writers I knew one way or another, and then, and I, but I needed 14, including, including my story. And so a few people gave me leads and said, have you um, talked to Eduardo Santiago? He lives in Idlewild. At least he did at the time. He doesn't anymore. And so a few people came to me that way that I was so grateful for because they're wonderful writers. Um, so it, you know, I, I knew a lot of their their work because of the radio show and because of you know different things I've been involved with because so, of your your radio show yeah 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 and um and I think all of them pretty much said yes um I think Jeff Parker I had to guilt trip him into doing the story because he was really busy I'm like it works oh, yeah, don't worry about me <laughs> whatever works in the dark <laughs> <laughs> so so let's talk about your story the story okay. that you submitted all right. Uh, tell tell us about that. Well, you know, swimming pools are wonderful, wonderful features in the desert. When you go to the desert, whenever I go to the desert, I want to rent a house with a swimming pool. But whenever I'm there, I'm always looking at the pool going, has anybody checked the connections recently with the underwater lights and the filters? And what about electricity and water? And, and, um, and so... I, so the swimming pool figures, um, you know, in a huge way in my story as you know, and um, it takes place in Twin Palms and I love that neighborhood. I love the architecture. It has a concentration of mid-century modern homes that, um, you know, at one time it was like the neighborhood where people were moving into to live full time. And so it began as a residential neighborhood, but the houses are beautiful. And so I wanted my story to take place there. And the swimming pool had to figure in on what goes wrong. And so then, you know, I think we take, um, at least I take aspects of my life and put them into my fiction. And while the story is in no way autobiographical, it did, um, the aspect of the brother sister relationship came from um, a problem I had with my brother. And um, I forgave him for what he did. So, you know, he's okay. He was okay. He's not okay now, but that's because he died a few years ago, but not in a swimming pool. But um, so <laughs> anyway, a long way of saying that I imagined what would um, someone do who could not forgive her brother? Well, she might make something happen with a swimming pool, um, especially if he's a swimmer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you, you know, one of the things I've noticed about your short stories, um, and I guess I'm thinking um, specifically of the short story you wrote for Crossing Borders, mm -hmm. um, is the, 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 yeah, I know. When you started that, I was like, is that the same one? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to talk about the swimming pool and what that means to you in a, in a more private conversation. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, I think that there's a um, like a, a sensual or a visceral um, feeling to your writing. Mm -hmm. um, so when you when you go out to or when you set out to write a short story, 
Um, how, how, what is that process like for you? Oh man, I wish I knew. I mean, cause they all, they all start in different ways. Um, I think pool fishing, the story you're talking about that was um, in crossing borders that, I think that started just from a prompt. And I found myself in the same setting that Crazy For You takes place in. And it was that, that converted motel in Costa Mesa, California, where um, the character in Pool Fishing lives as well. And so the setting, I love the setting from Crazy For You and I wanted to use it again. And then I put her there and here comes the sky and he's, you know, holding his girlfriend hostage because she is trying to break up with him. I don't know where that came from. I think I follow free writes. I, I do a lot of free writing for initial um, drafts because I don't know. And often these stories come out of the free write. I don't sit down and free write with the intention of a story coming out, but just you know, letting it rip and, and see if I have anything. And a lot of the times I don't, but sometimes I do. And, and I recognize those times that I do, you know, and maybe I don't recognize others that I should, but I, you know, it, it comes out of free writing for the most part and setting. And I love that setting. So a few stories have taken place there. I keep bringing it back. So do you outline? No, I don't outline, but I do need to, I often do need to know where I'm going. You know, I mean, it's sort of like, you, you know, that, that old saw about, you know, the headlights and the car, you only need to know as far as, but that's not how I drive. I, I don't get in the car and just go. I mean, I usually know where I'm going. I may not know the route, but I know where I'm going. And so um, I think for crazy for you, I had the ending because I had a template. I was I was using um, an old movie, Days of Heaven, that um, I think is quite a noir movie. I don't know if anybody else considers it noir, but I do. And um, I used that as sort of a template. So I knew where it was going to go. I knew how it was going to end. And with the story in Palm Springs Noir, um, I knew the pool had to have something to do with the end. And I knew there was a mother, um, but I didn't, you know, no, I don't outline. I have elements um, and that's about it, which I don't know, novels I think are a different thing, but short stories, you know, I mean, you know, if, it, if a draft doesn't work, you start over. Well, you're so you're a writing instructor and, and teacher. Yeah. So how do you teach people who um, outline? Uh, I mean, how how is that? I mean, everybody's writing style is so personal. Mm -hmm. How how do you adjust and and get your concepts across to people who approach writing so differently? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I admire outliners, actually. I mean, I think, I wish I knew how to do it better, you know? I think yeah. um, it really cuts down on um, time waste because when you just write and you don't know where you're going. Um, so I, I think I am actually more in the outline. Um, um, I'm, I'm on that side of the room more and more. Um, especially since I discovered Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which I'm, you know, I think is the holy grail of story and structure, where you um, come up with your beats, your 15 beats, if you're writing a novel. So outliners and I get along pretty well, because I think that's a good way to go, actually. With short fiction, um, again, because stories can be very short. I mean, flash story is under a thousand words, your average story is maybe 3,000 to 6,000 words max. And so again, if it doesn't work, you start over. You just, you know, take your idea, try it again another way. Um, a novel, whole different thing. Do you feel like you have more um, flexibility and freedom in writing short stories from a literary uh, perspective that people don't expect short stories maybe to be as structured as novels? Or do you think that that's um, not true? Mm. 
I don't know. I mean, stories are structured. You know, there's something has to happen right away. I mean, the first page, it's a short story. It has to happen on the first page. Um, so I do see stories as having structure, unless you're writing an experimental short story, in which case anything goes as long as it works kind of thing. But so I guess, I guess we have an idea of what these short stories look like from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, they probably all start off um, in a very entertaining and exciting way. Um, t tell me when you put this all together and you got fi you finally had all the stories put together and I noticed that you kind of grouped them together and they're, they're sort of, um, uh, I guess, sorted in, in a certain fashion. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did you hope when somebody sat down and picked up the book, the anthology, what did you hope that they would feel like when they were done? Or what kind of an experience did you hope that they would have? Yeah. You know, you, you hope uh, your readers finish the book and, um, you know, maybe pick up another Akashic anthology um, or be inspired to sit down and write a noir short story. Um, because I think, I think with noir, uh, certain writers and readers, maybe readers mostly have the wrong idea about noir. They see it as you know, 40s, 50s kind of, you know, dark alleys and, and uh, women in suits. And noir is, it has expanded in, in what, it, what it does, what it can do. And so, you know, maybe somebody reads the book and goes, you know what, I want to I wanna try this. Um, because I think it's such a fun genre. It's, my, it's probably my favorite genre in the mystery, you know, as a subgenre because you're dealing with, I mean, setting is big. Um, you can deal with revenge because noir tends to have an element of revenge. Um, and characters who um, don't take the high road. You know, most of us take the high road when we um, encounter a challenge, but noir characters make mistakes. And it's, it's fun to write people like that. Um, you know, it just, I'm trying to figure out why it's so fun. And I don't really know that, but I know I enjoy those characters, reading about them and writing them. Well, I, where, I know that it's, what is the status now? Are we in pre-order now? Is the, mm -hmm. so how can people get a hold of this uh, wonderful anthology? You know, pre-order at bookshop.org or in a brick and mortar store is great. Um, Akashic is selling them now. Akashic has them and is is uh, selling them. I think at a little discount actually. So on their um, website or their website, yeah. You go to Akashic and um, Akashic Books and look. We'll up put that in the comment section. If you if when we get the link, we'll put that in the comment section yeah, so yeah. people know how yeah. to get there. They've been sending them out. So, but July sixth is the date, the official uh, release release date. So. That'll be we'll, we'll be we'll be looking forward to that. Um, I mean, there's such great writers and such a great setting and so many possibilities. I'm I can't wait to get, I've already ordered my copy. So oh, good. Um, yeah. Thank you. And you might want to, you know, readers, I also hope will want to go to Palm Springs after after <laughs> reading and uh, check out the different neighborhoods, because really, I mean, it's safe enough, you know, I mean, all these noir anthologies, you have to focus on the dark side. It's you know, we're, But we're all attracted to that, Barb. Yeah. That's why, that's why we're reading it. You know, you want to go there and you want to have um, uh, an experience. So, right. Right. yeah. So if you want to have an experience, just drive the 10 that out to Palm, De <laughs> Palm Springs. That in itself is an experience. Um, all right. So we want to thank you today for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, I, hopefully you'll check back into the comments section. Uh, we have people watching who are going to have questions and comments. So um, I think Barb's going to be checking back in uh, um, and answering those at the time. If you enjoyed this, um, please share the video with your friends, talk about the books. Um, if um, you are looking for more videos like this, you can check us out on um, YouTube, which is SCWA Writers Online. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, stay safe and we will see you soon. We'll see you soon, Barb.